I'm going to show the process I use for creating backing tracks. It always starts with making a drum track using Native Instruments Machine and Tune Track Superior Drummer. For added dynamics and feel, I'll sometimes use drumsticks and a Macmillan bop pad for overdubs. I'll also add any synth tracks using both Machine and a Macmillan Q Nexus. I'll start a new project and add to it a pre-mapped group I have for Superior Drummer. The first bank of 16 pads is my default kit mapping. I can scroll up to another bank of 16 pads where I can use all of the hi-hat articulations. Now I'm going to use Machine's MIDI editor to remove all of the hi-hats in the pattern I recorded a minute ago so that I can overdub a new two-handed hi-hat pattern. Back in the MIDI editor, I can selectively remove any hi-hat that overlays a snare or crash. Now I'll overdub those parts using the bop pad. First, I'll make a copy of the scene and pattern I've been working with. I'll talk more about scenes later. On the new copy of the pattern, I'll use the MIDI editor to remove all hi-hat, snare, and tom hits. Now I've loaded a completed project that has two different pianos in it. I'll create a new scene and also a new pattern for both piano groups.
I'll record a pattern using each of the piano sounds. In scene view, the 16 pads are used to lay out groupings of drum and piano patterns. Now I've loaded another project that organizes its scenes into a complete song arrangement. This project has 21 scenes made from variations of the following sounds. An electric piano with six patterns recorded, a B3 organ with 19 patterns, and drums with 14 patterns. Switching now from scene to arranger view. You can see that there are three banks for the 16 pads. Each pad is one scene, and they are laid out in order to create an arrangement. This pad is a scene in the first chord. I can select to loop the entire arrangement from the first pad in bank one to the last pad in bank three. Also, any scene placed in the arrangement can repeat any number of times. I'll lengthen this scene so that it'll repeat four times. You can see the timeline lengthening in the left window. I'll select a range of three scenes with the repeated one in the middle, using the right window to zoom in on that range. Now I'll move on to recording bass guitar. The machine arrangement has been exported into Sonar, and I've also created a click track. Instead of looping bass parts, I try to record the live bass in one pass over the entire song using as little overdubbing as possible. I split the signal coming out of the bass. One goes to an amp that I record with a kick drum mic. 
The second is sent through a DI box and recorded on a second track. I mix both tracks together. Now it's time to bounce the tracks down to what I would call stems and store them on the external media. The duo flashcard is what I use uh, for performing these songs with only vocals and guitar. Four stems are created for every song. The trio flashcard is for use when performing with live vocals, guitar, and drums, and I create five stems for this. The flashcards themselves are used in an Electro Harmonics 45000 looper, which is a lot more like a portable DAW than the phrase loopers you might be familiar with if you're a guitar player. Here are the stems for the duo card. Stereo drums and synth are combined together and panned left and right to occupy the first two tracks. Bass guitar is the third track in mono. There's no click used at all, and the last track is a full stereo mix of everything. And here are the stems for the trio card. All the tracks are panned left except the click. That one gets panned right, and this allows for the click track to be sent separately. The first track is always any extra percussion. Then synth tracks in mono. Then bass and mono. And lastly, the click track. The full mix of the song gets put on the last stereo track uh, with everything from the duo card, including the drums. I use a MIDI foot controller on stage to manage the Electro Harmonix 45000. I've shown that in plenty of other videos, so if you want to know more, please go check those out. I know this process is highly specialized to fit my own needs, uh, but I hope you found some useful info that you can apply to your own situation. Still, you can ask me anything in the comments about looping in general, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.